Welcome once again to my channel. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia, I appreciate you very much. Thank you for joining me wherever you are. If you have subscribed to my channel, thank you very much. If you have not subscribed, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified every time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. I continue to bring you details and information on things that are happening in Nigeria, the contraption called Nigeria that is suppressing a whole lot of nations. A nation like the Biafran nation, the Odudua nation, they are in occupation by the Biafran government, the Nigerian government, and they are not allowing the people to breed. All the indigenous people in Nigeria are suffering the same fate. Most of them cannot breed, all in the name of being uh, being chased away and being intimidated by the Fulanis. The Fulani Caliphate have decided that there will be no peace in Nigeria until they have acquired all the land owned by the indigenous people of Nigeria, which comprises of many nations. We have the Igbos there, we have the, the Biafrans, we have the Dudua, the Middle Belters are also there. And they have decided to unleash mayhem in every indigenous tribe in Nigeria, and this cannot be condoned and it's unacceptable. And the most worrisome thing that is in this whole issue is that the government of the day, the government of the contraption called Nigeria, is a terrorist government. When we say that the government of Nigeria is a terrorist government, people do not understand and people doubt it. And some say, why did you say that the Nigerian government is a terrorist government? I'm going to tell you why and I'm going to prove it to you with some videos that we have seen online. These issues have been happening, the information are out there, but only that some of us are very docile to begin to search for these informations and get them first hand on your hand. But we try our best as much as possible all the time to bring this information to your doorstep for you to know what is actually going on in the contraption called Nigeria. The Nigerian government is a terrorist government, proven beyond reasonable doubt. If you can remember, the person they have in power now, who they call Muhammad Buhari, though we know he is late, they are using someone else and his post and using his name to run the country. When that man was alive, we can remember, if you can remember, the record is still there, you can search it up and you can see it, that this same man who is called the president of Nigeria today has been once nominated by the Boko Haram set. The terrorist group we know as Boko Haram have once in a time nominated him to be their spokesman. They nominated Buhari to go and negotiate for them. On the issue of the insecurity between Nigeria and the Boko Haram. When the fight was going up heavily, the so-called terrorists came out and nominated the person they are using his name now as the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, to stand for them and negotiate for them. And not only that, this same man who is in power now, who they are using his name, who they claim is in power, which we know is not, is late, is no longer there came out in one of his speeches and said that any fight against Boko Haram is fight against the North. He was standing with them, speaking for them. He became their spokesman at a point in time. But it's, it's, it's unfortunate that the, the Nigerians have a very short memory. It's either they have a short memory or either they ignore it for their selfish interests. And they came out and take this same man to put in power as their president. What a shame. What a shame. This can never happen in any same country where there are same people. And it's unfortunate. That is why I cry most of the time for my brothers in the south, southern region. You find out that the southern people who are more educated and knows what is actually going on, who we are very much aware that this man is a terrorist, supported him and made sure he got the power. It is sad. But today, here are we. And it has not ended since he got the power. He has tried as much as possible to empower Boko Haram and they are becoming stronger more than, more than ever. The record is still there before Jonathan left in power. A few days before he left power, he tried everything possible to make sure that these people were driven out from all local government in the north. They were nowhere to be found. Even when it seemed that, uh, that Jonathan was not working, it was the same northerners that were frustrating his effort, even in the military. The commanders on the ground were frustrated, the, 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 frustrated his effort. Of course, Jonathan cannot be on the ground to go and fight them. He has to appoint some of those who he are appointed. And the Northern governors stood against them. Every possible means they made, every move they made to make sure they crush this group was being frustrated by the Northern groups. But here are we today. Buhari has come in power, claiming that he's going to stop them. 
and they have become more empowered than ever. Today, almost the whole northern states are in the hands of Boko Haram. They nicknamed them to be bandits, which we know are really Boko Haram. They nicknamed them to be bandits in order to bring them closer to the people. And today, the whole northern states are being occupied by Boko Haram, which they nicknamed to be bandits. And the most provoking one is that which sensible government in the world we say that they rehabilitated a terrorist man, a, ter a well-known terrorist, and then reintegrated to the military. Where have this happened in the, the whole world? Have you ever heard of such before? For a military to, for a government to recruit terrorists in their military, and they come out openly to admit it. They are telling us they are rehabilitating terrorists. How do you rehabilitate terrorists and put them into the military? to hold key posts in the military. The government of Muhammad Buhari now is being run by terrorists. Recently we saw about the issue of Pantami. Pantami who is a terrorist apologist who has been supporting terrorism against the world, against the United States, against other people, supporting all the terrorist groups in the world, was appointed as minister in Nigeria, in the, in the Buhari government. When the masses spoke up, they stood against them and stood their ground and the government said, defended him and said that he has repented. What a repentant terrorist. So, um, one, this is something that has uh, gotten a lot of people uh, perhaps interested in this matter. And uh, for those who argued that Mr. Pantani necessarily shouldn't be the only person who can handle that office, with the decision of President Buhari to side with Mr. Pantani, are you not worried of the message the presidency might be passing to the world on terrorism, issues relating to religious no. extremism. Are the views that are no. growing that this government just gave a tacit support to such? Mm -hmm. I'm saying to you, those people who stand in criticism of this position of the man who has said he had wronged himself, he had wronged society, has apologized and changed, and they are not willing to forgive him to move on, they are the ones who are the problem. They are the ones who are who are deeply intolerant and who are telling the world that, yes, in this country, we, are, we also have a set of people who don't forgive, who don't want to move here. And so therefore, they are a problem to the society. This is why we say that the Buhari government is a terrorist government. It doesn't happen in anywhere. It doesn't happen in any part of the world except in Nigeria. The records are there. The same government of Muhammad Buhari knows very well that Miyeti Allah is a terrorist government because the Fulani headsmen, the Fulani headers, the killer Fulani headsmen, they are the world most dangerous terrorists in the world, number fourth in the world, fourth in the world among the most dangerous terrorists in the world, fourth in the world. And they took these people, the Miyeti Allah, and put them in government. They came out openly to announce to us that Miyeti Allah is a stakeholder in Nigerian government. Mieti Allah that you know that a terrorist group, terrorist organization, they are supporting terrorists. They came out to claim a lot of killing that happened in Nigeria. The video is there out there for you to see. When you see when, when uh, what do you call him, Shehu, Garba Shehu, what do you call him? Garba Shehu, the spokesman to the presidency came out to say that Mieti Allah is a stakeholder in Nigerian government. You can see the video, it will play and you hear from him directly. The Mieti Allah group is like your own Ohainese or Afinifiri. It's just a cultural group. It's not, but uh, but there, are, it's not, it's not. There, are, there are criminals within the Yoruba race, and you cannot say because they are Yoruba criminals, then, then, then Afinifiri is a band of criminals. Nigerian government is speaking to the leadership of the Fulani Cultural Association, Mieti Allah. You can see. These are proof to show you that the government of Nigeria is a terrorist government. This same Miet Allah came out to claim several deaths, several killings in Benue State that they are responsible for. And the governor of Benue State have been shouting every time and again, calling them out by their names, calling them out that they have claimed responsibility and they have planned several times to come, said they are going to make, uh, make, a, make, make a Benue State uh, ungovernable. They claim Benue State to be their own inheritance. All sort of claim for this Mieti terrorist organization. Yet, the government of Nigeria 
take them as a stakeholder in the government and they decide what happens in the contraption called Nigeria. Federal government have gone ahead to ban iPod. Why can't they ban? What did iPod do that they went ahead and banned them? This one that Fulanis are taking over everywhere under the watch of the presidency and they're not saying anything. What is the meaning of that? What are they trying to say? The World Terrorist Index have described Fulani as the fourth terrorist group in the world. But up to today, they have not cared, the federal government have not cared to declare his men as terrorist organization. And they have gone for that to form Mieti Allah, Katon Hore, Mieti Allah, Katu Breeders, Mieti Allah, this one, Funam, that one. And federal government is romancing with them. And federal government comes out to defend them. Anything, time, something happens to them. But when they cause pains in the lives of other people, federal government will keep quiet. What else will you do? When you see your people being killed, you see your people's farm being raised down, being eaten off by herdsmen, what else will you do as a patriotic person of that community? What else will you do? What else do you want to hear for you to know that that government is a terrorist government and no one, no one in his right senses should support such government? No one. No one in his right senses should support such government. It is a shame when I begin to cry about the people in the South. Instead of thinking of what matters, they are all pursuing their selfish interest. Pursuing their selfish interest as a second-class citizen. You see a lot of the governors who are in PDP defecting to APC, defecting from one party to the other, just to continue their evil act and to cover up their evil ass. Which man in his right senses at this particular point in time will begin to defect from one party to the other? Let alone defecting to a party of a terrorist, a terrorist party. A party that is a party to terrorists, a party that have destroyed the country. It is a shame. Initially, I thought that the Akwa Ibom governor was sane, but I never knew that he's the most insane person in Nigeria. It is a shame. Now I know why Mazin Nande kind of used to say that when you see somebody from Nigeria come out and tell you that he's a professor, you should spit on that person and give him a slap. This person who is the governor of Akwa Ibom State claimed to be a professor. He even pronounced himself as a professor before making the defection then all he has to do is to defect to a terrorist government to continue to pursue the evil agenda of fulanization of Nigeria. What a shame. What a shame. In the very north we are talking about, nobody in the north is defecting as we are speaking now. The north are not moving either to PTP or up to PAPC. They are standing their ground. And wherever they are, they know what is their mission and they are pursuing their mission to the last. But in the south, what do you see? Last time it was the Enugu State Governor. This time around it's a quiet one. Moving to the terrorist section. Moving to the north entirely to begin to, to begin to give information against his people and destroy his people. That is the only plan and nothing else. I would like you to listen to the video, what he has to say. There are his reasons for defection. Just listen to what somebody who calls himself a professor in this very age, age, age and time that we know everything that is happening in Nigeria, that the information is out there for you and I on the situation of the country and what the government is doing and how the government has failed. But this man who called himself a professor came out and hear him what he had to say be his reason of defection. What a shame. Let's hear from him. It is obvious that at this point, we need to join hands with him to build a Nigerian that we'll be proud of. We need all governors to recognize that it is not party. It is character, it is integrity, it is honor, it is commitment to the vision of this great nation. That we want to, as a team, walk ahead of the president by working towards building a prosperous country that the succession process of 2023 will come without the fears and worries that the international community holds. If every one of us as governors join hands with the, Mr. President, I think we can sit on the same dining table 
and agree on a way to govern this country. Our population, over 207 million people, with the kind of political tension we have, we can't afford to sustain it. And as a professor, having seen the sincerity and commitment of Mr. President, having seen the progress attained so far, having seen the associated tension occasioned by the increasing social media manipulation to create a level of hysteria, having recognized the challenges of our youths and issues of unemployment and the associated challenges therefrom, it's my responsibility as the leader of the party in Cross River State, as the leader of the people in Cross River State from the political perspective, to do all I can to assist Mr. President succeed. It is in this process and recognizing the role of Cross River State, a state that has been reduced to want in body, in spirit, and in soul, a state whose revenue and resources have been taken, a state whose territorial boundaries have been interfered with. It's my responsibility to resocket Cross River State to the center. I therefore, on behalf of the entire people of Cross River State, to the extent that believe in the philosophy and idea of peace and unity, that Cross River State is today formally declared as an APC state. You can see that these people do not mean well for anybody in the South. The politicians in the South do not mean well for you and I. It doesn't matter where they come from, it doesn't matter the tribe they are, Igbo, Aosa, Yoruba, or whatever. More especially the South, it doesn't matter their religion, whatever, wherever they may come from, Ijo, whatever. The politicians, they are the major problem we have in the, in the South. They have no interest of the Southerners in their hand. They have no interest of the people in their heart. All they want is their selfish interest, pursuing one agenda or the other to make themselves popular and to enrich themselves. That is their only aim. That is why we all have to wake up and follow the right step. It is time you stop listening to jargons, listening to all those your failed governors and failed leaders and failed elites. Follow the right source. Whatever region you belong to, there are people you have to listen to in your region. People who are speaking the right words, saying it the way it is. In the old South region as a whole, if you have not joined IPOB, the indigenous people of Biafra, join the IPOB. Listen to Mazen Nandikan, then you'll be educated and know what is going on. If you are from the South East, Southwest, listen to Igbo. Igbo is bringing out the message. Ghani Adams is bringing out the message. These are people you should be listening to. To know what is going on in that very country. Do not rely on your governors or your elites. They have come to destroy, to kill. That is the only thing they have come to. To enrich themselves and their families. They care not about you nor about me. We cannot remain this way. They have succeeded in using their, their conventional media in Nigeria to propagate lies, lies upon lies against the masses. You saw during the time of NSAS. It was all lies, denying the death of the people they have killed. Innocent people they killed, they denied their death. This happened during the time of NSAS. It didn't end that. The problem continues. They have uh, tried as much as possible in their media at all the time to make the victims, to make the victims, the, 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 the perpetrators of the evil. People who are victims, the citizens who have been victimized, instead of standing with them, the media is standing with the government because of their selfish interests and their gains. They care not about you, neither do they care about me. It is time we begin to listen to the right people. We know there are some fake news on social media also, but the way you can get the real information are some of the medias you have in the social media. You can listen to Maya Gujadara. He is from the southwest in Yoruba man, speaking the truth the way it is. You can listen to Simon Epa. He is doing a great job, giving his information the way it is and exposing all the evil. More especially, listen to the Radio Biafra. Radio Biafra gives you information and details of what is happening in that contraption called Nigeria. The root truth and nothing but the truth. Tells you everything that is happening in the southeast of Nigeria. The Radio Biafra will educate you and give you the true information of that contraption called Nigeria. These are places you can get your information. Time has come.
when we have to listen to the right word and the right message for us to change our mindset and pursue what is right. We cannot allow these people to continue to make us the oppressor while we are the victims. We can't allow the government to continue to make the indigenous people of Nigeria the oppressors instead of being the victims. The Fulanese have rained hell on the contraption called Nigeria. And the government of Nigeria, as it's been structured now, is a terrorist government with proofs everywhere. With proofs. They are supporting terrorists day in, day out. As we speak, the northern section of Nigeria has been occupied by terrorists. And they are not doing anything to help out the north. Instead, they are pushing out their terrorist military to the side of the terrorist military. Those, those Boko Haram that have recruited to put into their military, they are pushing them to the southeast. You see a lot of video flying online. I cannot share some of them with you here because they are so horrific. You will see the military of Nigeria killing innocent people in the southeast. This is happening as I'm speaking to you now. A lot of people are losing their life in Obibu. A lot of people are losing their life in Enugu states. A lot of people are losing their life in, uh, in, uh, in Abia state. A lot of people are losing their life in Imo state. Being sponsored by the governors of this region. They didn't mean well for you and I. All they are pursuing is their selfish interest to be a second class citizen as a vice president in Nigeria, which will never come to pass. If you do not know, just know it that this is the last era you're going to have a president that is called the president of Nigeria. After this name they are using as Buhari, there will be no Nigeria anymore and there will be no president called a Nigerian president. So the earlier you begin to go back to your zone and work with your zone, if you're a Yoruba, Work with your Yoruba group. If you are a Biafra, work with Biafra. If you are Middle Belt, work with the Biafra. With, with the Middle Belt. If you are from the North, work with the Arewa group. Work with the Arewa group to fight against the terrorists in the in Arewa land, and have a country, a place you you will at least practice your religion the way you want it. It doesn't matter if you want to practice your Sharia. Prepare your Arewa and practice your Sharia in Arewa. Why are you bent on forcing people into what they do not believe in? Freedom of worship is, for, is, is, is the right for everyone. Freedom of worship, whatever you want to worship, go ahead and do it. Your spirituality is, your, is entirely your own business. It doesn't concern anybody. Nobody interferes in your spirituality. It doesn't matter where you come from. Why are you forcing people into what they do not want to belong to? The country Nigeria have aspired more now that it's been occupied by the terrorist government it can no longer work time has come for us to go back to basis go back to basis and do the right thing Mazin Nandekano has been crying every now and again he has done everything he possibly that is possible as a man he has educated all of us he made all of us to know what is actually going on today and some of us can come out and speak about it he is not going to kill himself for us he is fighting, fighting so hard, he is not relenting, but we have to give him support. You are going to support him the best way you can by speaking out. Use your platform to speak up. Support ESN as best as you can. Support ESN as best as you can. Speak out for your own section, wherever you belong. Support your group in any way you can with your platform, financially, with your prayers. It's all welcome. Thank you so much for listening and remember bless. I'll be here again to give you more information as they get to our table. Thank you. If you are not subscribed, kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. Thank you and remember this. Bye bye. See you again on the next video.